All right, so what I want to do for uh, to this exercise, right, is I want to show you guys how to get, like, piping uh, on this ship, right? Um, in this case, I actually think I had that older one. Let me go to file open here really quick. I was going to say, I think I had an older one. I've got another student. <laughs> uh, let's see, I think I, seven should be the right one, actually. There we go. All right. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I was going to say, I like, that felt like that was a little bit less complete than the last video. All right. Um, so in this case, what I really wanted to show you guys today was um, uh, how to put, like, pipes or hoses on a ship. Now, the thing is, we did on our, our uh, environment, right, we did get to see a little bit about how that works, right? Kind of how to create curves, how to use the bevel feature of part of the curves. Um, and that's neat, right? But here's the thing. You can actually uh, draw a curve or create a curve that snaps to a surface. And that's what I want to show you. So most of this is stuff we did on our chandelier. But as usual, we're going to kind of throw a bit of a variation in there, right? Now remember, at the very top kind of here, there's this little section right here. It's kind of right below the uh, tabs for animation, rendering, compositing. We've seen that it's kind of got our, our global, which is how we kind of change the orientation of our transformation, right? Uh, the, the angle it's at. Uh, and then, of course, there's that second one, which is the position, right? The transform pivot point. And those are both quite powerful and quite good in Blender, right? But there's then this third one, right? The fourth one's actually basically soft selection, your proportional editing. Um, I tend to use sculpting tools more for that anyways, but it is there. It's, it can be, can, can be kind of cool sometimes. But there is the magnet, right? The magnet. And usually in most software, when you see a magnet, it indicates snapping tools. That's actually, I don't want to say universally an icon for snap, but it's almost, right? A lot of software uses magnet to indicate its snapping tools. So the cool thing is, remember, you can turn the magnet on and your snapping tools are on. But right next to it is a little menu, right? The magnet's right there, you turn it on. But right next to it is the uh, snapping menu itself. So if I click on that, you'll see there's options. Increment, particularly if you turn on absolute grid snap, is basically your grid snap. But you can snap to vertices, you can snap to edges, edge center, edge perpendicular. Blender's got pretty nice snapping tools. And there's things you can use for, like shrink wrap to kind of do some snapping or suctioning to surfaces also, but uh, that's kind of overkill for this. But if I switch to face, right? So remember, we can turn the magnet on and then go to the menu next to it, click on this switch to face. We now have this right here. Now there's some things we could do to turn this on if we want to for snapping, right? We can have project individual elements, move rotate scale. So you can actually kind of turn some of these on if you need to, right? Um, could kind of be neat. Uh, in this case, though, I'm going to kind of uh, leave it for now, but face, and you can switch around with some of these options a little bit, right? But we want the magnet to be on for snap, and we want to switch our snapping to face. Once we've done that, we can go make sure we're in object mode, right? Four for object mode. And I can go to add, right? And instead of a mesh, adding a mesh, we can add a curve, and we've done this several times, right? We've added curves on multiple occasions in Blender. Um, so we go to Add, the second menu down, Curve, and there's, of course, a couple different curve types. Uh, I just don't want you guys to have to worry about having uh, multiple handles on your curves, so I find nervous curves are a little simpler to work with while still giving you a nice curve to work with. Uh, so we'll just go Add Curve, nerves Curve, and we know that it's creating a default curve in the center of this mesh here, right? So if I hit one for uh, edit mode, right, one for edit mode, you'll see these vertices come up. And I can now hit W for move. Now remember, you have view move, right? It's that center handle, the white circle. But remember, as I've talked about this many times in these videos and these lectures and then review lectures, middle mouse button actually automatically will do your things like view move, view rotate, uh, your uniform scale for your scale tool. It'll do view extrude. Oftentimes, your middle mouse button can be used to grab kind of the circle handles on your tool. Not always, but often. So if I just hold down middle mouse button and drag, you see all of a sudden it starts to kind of snap this curve, or at least some of the vertices, to the surface. I can move it over a little bit. The thing, though, I can also do is I can start to just uh, select single vertices, right? So I could just, right, we're in one for edit mode, which in this case is vertex mode on a curve. And I can do middle mouse button, and you see how it snaps this point to the surface. I could left click on that vertex, middle mouse button to snap that one. 
left click on that one to select it, middle mouse button to drag. And then of course, left click on this last one, middle mouse button to drag. And you'll now see that these points are actually snapping to the face, right? That's actually kind of the big new thing on this thing, that's this uh, tool we're doing, right? We've created curves before. We know we can extrude and subdivide curves. I'm gonna talk about that stuff again here. We even know that if we go over to the modifier, right, or our properties editor down here, there's that blue wrench, which is our modifier, uh, but there's a couple ones down. There's that green curve, right? It's almost at the bottom. Uh, it's right above the kind of uh, reddish kind of checkerboard ball, which remembers for your materials. We'll be seeing that a lot more in the next couple weeks when we do texturing and all that stuff. But we notice that there is the orange, or the, not the orange, but the green curve here. So I click on that, right? That green curve. It's towards the bottom, but it's part of your property uh, kind of menu, right? Your editor type properties, which is this, which is all these really, different properties. And remember, in the orange, right? Or the green, sorry, we can go to geometry, right? And that's where we could actually control and play with things like our depth. Uh, he was not. All right, so all right, we have our curves. We can go to the bevel section, and there is the area called depth, right? And remember, if we just start to kind of left-click drag in the view, uh, the actual hand, the numbers here, or the little kind of Vs on the side, we can start to create thickness for this bevel, right? So remember, this controls our bevel, and it actually gives us geometry for this, right? Now, of course, we can play around with things like our resolution uh, that go around kind of this direction, make it a little simpler. Uh, we can go up here to control the resolution uh, kind of this way. But you'll notice that they stick to the surface. Now, remember, any vertex that we select, particularly if it's the end vertices, we can actually extrude that. Now, remember, there actually is extrude right here, uh, just like we have radius and tilt and all that stuff. But control E. Remember, is your quick key for extrude. So if I do control E, and then I just do middle mouse button to do that view drag, you'll notice what I could start to do is I could actually basically start to extrude, and this snaps to the surface, right? So I could easily kind of just come in here and basically kind of just draw a pipe along the surface, right? Now, of course, I can go back to W for move, and I could select these vertices again and move them around to kind of adjust the position, right? If I want to select two vertices, right, and I right click, remember the subdivide option comes up. And that gives us a new vertice there that we can select and move around to snap the surface. So you can see how we can actually snap these to the surface. Now, if I go to the snap faces tool, you'll see project on self is there. Um, you play with closest or center, right? There, there's uh, plenty of options here for this to kind of play around with. Um, usually you're fine with kind of defaults. shouldn't provide too much of a problem, right? But you see how this snaps to the surfaces it's on, right? You can even use your tweak tool uh, with these curve points if you want to. And of course, I could extrude, right? Control E for extrusion. And keep by extruding out here. And you see how basically this allows us to kind of create some piping or hoses that follow the surface, right? Remember the extrude handle itself is this one in your curve tools, right? But it is using the same quick key that the regular extrude tool does, control E. And then of course I can go back to W for move and I can just move these around a little bit. Remember we could even select two, actually you can select multiple, right? So if I selected three there and I right click, subdivides the option and it gives me more points. It just gives me options to kind of adjust the form a little bit more. 
So just like with the stuff we did before, right, you have the ability to subdivide or extrude, but by the with the addition and bevel, of course, we've seen before, with the addition of the magnet snap to faces, this can stick to the surface. And that can be kind of a cool way to draw some pipes or some hoses on your mesh, right? So this is really meant to, meant to be kind of a cool, basic, hey, this is how you could approach this. If you want to put pipes, hoses, it's all the standard kind of control tools you'd expect to have um, from your curve, right? The ability to subdivide and extrude the ends and subdivide the vertices, just like we did on our ropes. But now it's sticking to the surface because it's snapped to faces. Remember, our magnet gives us our snapping tools. And remember, we can control resolution right here for... Uh, this direction, right? So you see if I keep turning this down a little bit more, it makes it less resolution in that direction, right? Uh, and then of course, the resolution this way kind of makes it have more or less resolution kind of around the circumference, right? The diameter of it. So kind of need to know about that, right? Remember, open up the bevel section in geometry. Uh, if you want, you can actually play with extrude to kind of have this thicken up, right? If you play with bevel, an extrusion here, you can actually kind of make it thin, right? See how it kind of becomes more of a stretched kind of pill shape? That's one of the things you could do with this. I feel like pipes, hoses are fine for us, so we'll just do extrusion zero and bring that depth resolution back up a little bit. But it's kind of neat to know that you can actually do that, right? That you actually have uh, some of those controls. You can even play with the uh, offset features a little bit, right? So if you want this to stick off the surface a little bit more, right, what you can do is you can kind of play with the offset control a little bit. Um, it is kind of not universal though, so you have to kind of be a little bit careful with that, but you know, you see how it kind of pushes off the surface a little bit there? It's kind of up to you on if you want to use it or not, but you have some neat controls that can allow you to do some cool stuff with this, right? You can even, if you want to, uh, go to profile and kind of play with some of these points to create more unique shapes, right? And I can add points here, and you can really start to control kind of the shape you get for this in a pretty different manner. You don't have to use that, right? I feel like our pipes and hoses will be fine for us, but I want to make sure you know the profile stuff is there. Uh, the overall curve features in Blender are pretty amazing, right? Remember, if you wanted to kind of get a little bit wider in areas, you can select those vertices. And you'll see over here that we do have radius and tilt. Tilt is kind of twist. Radius is thickness. So you can see how you can make your pipes get a little thicker there maybe. So one of the really, really neat things is you can actually thicken and thin out certain areas of this and even twist them, right? Kind of have it a uh, uh, well twist, right? So kind of up to you on if you want to use some of these other things, but I figured it would be kind of neat to get to see some of this functionality as part of your curve tools. Uh, now, of course, we could turn off our snap. And if I wanted to move some of these up, manually I could, right? They don't have to stay snapped, right? That's just a good starting point. So if we find there's a few areas here where maybe we want to move it off a little bit, we can, of course, right? And that's just W for move tool. And at any point, you don't have to freeze this yet, but if you go back to object mode, right? Four for object, we go to our blue wrench, right? We can go to add modifier mirror. And you can mirror these curves, and you still if I go back to one for edit mode, I could still adjust those curves. So if you want to still be able to adjust or tweak some of those shapes, you can, right? If you're happy with your curve, you can right click. So it brings up your object context menu, right? Go to object mode, four for object mode. And remember, you can convert to mesh. You just want to be careful by going back to your uh, green curve that your resolutions are lower so you don't have a really really dense curve like dense mesh what it creates 
Uh, I think I'll leave that uh, not converted for now, just in case we want to tweak it a little bit more on another lecture. But once again, mirror works with this, and all your editing works with this, right? So your curves are truly remarkable, right? You can even copy sections of this curve to put into different areas, right? So if I just wanted to grab a couple of these vertices here, control D for duplicate, right? We've seen duplicate before. You actually see it's in here, add duplicate, curve, control D. You can actually copy your curve and do some more work with it, right? And this is where like your radius can be cool because I can come back in here and make this curve thinner. I can turn my snap faces back on. Maybe do a little bit of an extrusion here. And I can easily just kind of get a little bit more curve stuff going on here, right? So you can easily add a second curve just by selecting some of the vertices. Control D for duplicate, right? Although that isn't your curve menu, duplicate. And you can actually control the radius of those points separately so that you have different thicknesses and thinnesses of your curve along a single one, but also different thicknesses of curves. And you see how the mirror automatically copied that? So say you can start to add some cool stuff to the outside of your ship as you're working on these things. Of course, I can turn that snap off. I can go to one for edit. I can probably grab this vertex, move it down a little bit just so that kind of curves in a little bit. Maybe even a quick extrusion just to give us a little bit more kind of going into there. And you don't have to keep shaping with your snap to faces on. It's something you can easily adjust later too, kind of to play with it. So of course I can go back to four for object mode. But I just wanted to really get you guys to see some of the core curve features. Like I said, I'll kind of leave it at that. Stop. All right. 